so if you have <coughs> if you have come to this point and there is an intensity for a change you recognize the need for a change that intensity that fire that enthusiasm that passion is the motive force to turn the mind from a mind of conclusion to an instrument of perception inquiry so long as i am comfortable so long as i am adapted to my environment i have come to terms with my environment so long as that state is continuing there is no need for me to change i can live with my conclusions but the moment i am confronted by my environment the moment i see that there is conflict and disharmony all around and the need for change is recognized change takes place so the observer has to realize that if it has to look at life it has to see life it has to see what is going around it must become silent if you all start talking while i am speaking obviously you cannot listen and if you are not talking outwardly but even if you are talking inwardly to yourself you cannot listen so if you are interested in listening talking must come to an end outwardly as well as inwardly and the the chattering of the observer is all its memories all its conclusions all its prejudices so as soon as you <coughs> see the need for a change and you see that the observer is just blind it goes on repeating its conclusions it cannot see anything it becomes silent are you doing it along with me or i am just talking and you are having some concept of some new system somewhere else because please don't take it as a concept it is to be is to be done together with me as i am speaking you should keep on doing it so that speaking and listening and acting goes on together it has to be observed it has to be done inside you and therefore it will need all your attention all your energies you just can't go to sleep and expect me to keep on talking or saying something which you might acquire as some form of information so when the observer 
become silent, not through self-hypnosis, not through an act of will, not through some discipline or technique, but simply by recognizing the need to understand. By simply recognizing the need to listen and to see, to find out reality, to find out the truth. The observer has become silent. The mind has become silent because now we do not know what the human mind is excepting the observer. We have never even questioned what are the limits of the human mind. All we know is our conclusions, our formulas, our pleasant and unpleasant memories and experiences. That's all we know. And so in that state, this is the only observer. The observer is the mind. There is no other mind. <clears throat> so once the observer sees the limitation of its experiences and memories, it becomes quiet. This silence is a relative silence. It's not a total silence. Please understand this point. When the mind sees its limitations, when thought sees its limitation, and I am using now thought, mind and the observer as synonymous. It may not be synonymous. But so long as the observer is the only entity which is moving in its framework, the three are synonymous. Please see that because we have to proceed factually. So, when the mind sees the limitation of all its knowledge, it comes to a silence. But you are aware of this silence. You are aware that your mind is silent. I am aware that my mind is silent. And so long as I am aware of this silence as my silence, my mind silence, this is relative. Because this silence is still confined within the framework of the me, of the center, which I have created through my thought. So this silence is still the part of the observer. Many of us who have gone into this inquiry do not proceed beyond this point. And it's important to understand this because otherwise, after years and years of listening, when you come around, you ask the same question again and again. That I listen, I go to a certain point, I watch myself, I come to a dead end, a blank wall, and that's it, and nothing more. And you are talking of dimension and love and cosmic consciousness and the other world, and I don't see anything. All I see is a blank wall. So that's true. That's what you see. And it's important to recognize what you actually see. And don't pretend that you are seeing God or divinity or something else. Because if you start projecting, you will form another observer. Another projection you will form. So it's important to be very honest and factual with your own self. So when you are conscious of your mind being silent, you are in an area of the blank, a mental blank. 
and you have not transcended the boundary of the observer or your mind. And most of us turn back from this point because we see it's useless, nothing happens. Why doesn't happen? There are two reasons why it doesn't happen. First thing is this silence, this state which I experience, I name it. I call it something, I call it a blank. And the moment I call it a blank, it becomes blank. Can you understand what I am saying? The moment you give something a name, observation comes to an end. So the moment you come to a conclusion, there is no more observation. So once you call the state the blank or the dead end or whatever, that naming is the block, that naming is the limit. So can the mind ask this question, I call it blank, I call it the dead end, but can I really go deeper and explore what it is? Because when you call it the blank, the tendency is to turn back, turn back to run away from it and you pick up a newspaper or a storybook or a magazine or light a cigarette or have a cup of tea or coffee and that's it. That's your whole remains with the observer and the observed. And it remains, reminds me of a very interesting incident. One man in Delhi he met a friend of mine and they both had gone to a talk of Sri J. Krishnamurti. And this other man talked to my friend that you seem to be coming regularly to listen to these talks. He said, yes. He said, look, I have been also listening to Krishnamurti's talks for the last 20 years. But he is talking about the observer and observed and I do not know what is this observer and observed is. I am coming every year in the hope that one day I may find out what the observer is. So if you can't find out the, what the observer is in 20 years, it's very unlikely that you'll find in 21 years or 22 years. Why? Because we are so conditioned to look to the words and accept the words for truth and we don't inquire further, we don't go do it ourselves further. But if you are passionately interested in it, it won't take 20 years, it won't take even 20 days. It can happen very quickly. So first thing, when you come across this dead end, what you call the blank, can the mind relax and say, look, this what I call blank, I do not know. I think it is blank. I feel it is blank. It may not be so. So that opens the inquiry to look further. A certain innocence, a certain humility. Drop the conclusion. Drop this name. And if you drop this conclusion, this name, the mind is again fresh to look. <laughs>